and welcome back to the show. Now we've just had Mother's Day and I'm a little bit forgetful. I did remember to send my mum a present, but it still hasn't arrived. Now imagine if you didn't have to worry about postal delays and you could just email your mum and then as if by magic she could print her present there on her desktop. We've sent Kelly and Gavin to find out if this could be possible. We've come to Bristol to investigate a technology that means you can send something to print and end up with a 3D object. That's right, it may sound like science fiction, but it's increasingly being used the world over for various applications. So, I'm going back to school. And I'm off to the University of West England to find out more. See you there. See you there. Dr David Hewson and Dr Peter Walters are researching novel uses for 3D printing at the University of West England Centre for Fine Print Research. The first thing I wanted to ask David was, what exactly is 3D printing? 3D printing is a collection of different technologies that allow you to realise uh, a real object from a computer 3D file. Okay. So what sort of things can you print in, in, in reality? Really, your imagination is a limit. We've printed a whole range of things. We uh, do quite a lot of work for artists. Um, they are increasingly taking uh, this technology to heart and um, we operate a bureau service for artists to print their designs. Uh, my particular research area is 3D printing in ceramics, but allows you to print out direct from a 3D computer model uh, a cup or a saucer, which can then be fired and then glazed and decorated in the normal, normal way. So, are there different types of 3D printers, or is it just the ceramic one you mentioned? Uh, there, there are many, many types of 3D printers. There's a whole range of technologies, ranging from a machine that costs you half a million pounds down to one that you can buy for a thousand pounds and put together yourself. Uh, obviously, you, you get what you pay for. I spoke to Dr. Peter Walters to find out what novel uses they've been looking into. Peter, I understand that you guys have been doing quite a lot of um, different and fairly unique things with, with 3D printing, so could you give me a quick rundown of what sort of things you've been up to? Um, one of them, for example, is uh, edible 3D printing, so that's uh, where we're actually um, creating 3D objects out of uh, food-based materials. So um, the kind of materials we've been exploring include sort of vanilla icing or chocolate fudge um, or even mashed potato. <laughs> And uh, we're exploring the whole idea that uh, in future, uh, when people have got these 3D printers in their homes, maybe they would like to make their own designed um, um, foodstuffs or, or perhaps a whole 3D printed meal. Oh. So I believe you've um, set up a uh, printer doing some icing for us. So what sort of things, what sort of shapes can you do with that? Sort? Yeah, the, the possibilities are endless in terms of the kind of 3D shapes we can create. Fantastic. Yeah. So from printed ice cream in the lab to eating ice cream at the seaside with Kelly. Hi, I've come to the coastal town of Clevedon to visit their local school where they're using this technology to bring their designs to life. I went to the Design and Technology Centre to meet with teacher David White. Hi Dave, so what is 3D printing? 3D printing is a, a very simple process that we are using in schools. It's really about rapid prototyping, which is enabling students to produce the designs that they've produced in 3D CAD software. Um, to make them a reality. So basically just printing them out? Exactly that. We're used to printing on paper but this actually produces a design in 3D. So how does it work? It works by um, a fairly simple process. Uh, most people are familiar with hot glue guns and it works by um, sort of squirting out a layer of plastic onto a, a flat surface uh, which then moves down and it prints another layer on top till it slowly builds up the, the whole object. And what do your students make of it? Uh, there's a certain amount of wow factor yeah, to imagine. start with, um, you know, sort of a, a virtual object on screen, and then to end up with, you know, the real thing in your hot sticky hand afterwards. It's it's absolutely fantastic. Tyler is a GCSE product design student who has been using the 3D printer. I wanted to design um, a iPod handlebar mount, which goes onto a pair of bike handlebars and will hold and support your iPod. After printing his initial design, Tyler realised that his product was too bulky. He then created an improved lighter and stronger version using the Ratman 3D printer. Uh, the fantastic thing about it is it's very open and students can see exactly what's happening. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the, the way that it works is that this sort of reddy orangey colour part un underneath is actually like a very, very miniature hot glue gun. Um, it's got a nozzle in the end of it which is only half a millimetre wide. 
and uh, the, that heats up the plastic, which is pulled up by these motors at the top here, uh, all the way down from the reel at the bottom. The machines can print using different materials. The one seen here uses a very strong plastic, often used to make car bumpers. New biodegradable materials are also becoming available, so now the school can be both innovative and environmentally friendly. It's really exciting to see young people given these opportunities. Hi guys, that looked really interesting. Yeah, it was really fascinating. Yeah, it's crazy what those guys are doing at the moment. Well, so we've seen they've got machines at school. How well do you reckon it could be likely to have a machine at home? It is possible, and a few people do have them, but uh, the affordable ones that you could have your home just don't have the same quality as the industrial scale ones, which are very expensive. So I might not be emailing my mum a present anytime soon, but what sort of things are they using it for at the moment? Well, the range of applications they're using are absolutely huge at the moment. Um, one of the most interesting ones that was done recently was in Belgium, where a woman had a problem with a jaw, and they printed out a brand new 3D titanium jaw, uh, which she actually had implanted. Obviously, it was a little bit heavy, um, <laughs> but she can still eat and talk, and everything's fine. Oh, fantastic, wow. indeed. Um, so, just in case your mother didn't get a present, yeah. I've actually got a little something here for you from one of the ceramic printers at UE. <laughs> fantastic. Oh, this is 3D printed? Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> Thanks very much for that. Thank you very much, <laughs> and we'll see you again next week. Um, <laughs>